Good morning and welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. We gather as a community both online and for all of us who are here in person. If you're new to Mount Olivet or you are visiting because someone you love is part of our telling of this passion story, special welcome to you. We're so glad you are with us today. And so we enter Holy Week. We spent many weeks in December preparing for the birth of the Messiah. We heard back then ancient promises revealing the people and events and how God was present moving the universe for that moment of birth. It is the same with the passion and death of Jesus. God is present revealing in people and events preparing us and the universe for the moment of Jesus' death. And so today we will hear near the entirety of the passion story from Matthew's gospel. Listen for these words in order to fulfill what was written. Matthew takes us back from what was said in the Old Testament to the New Testament, bridging that gap on where God is present and so we will sing today, and we will hear reflections from characters, and we will have time for contemplation. We will reenact in our listening the death of Jesus. And so please note today that your bulletins are annotated with details of the story. Please read. For those online, we will guide you. Guide your children in the details of this story. You will note on the screen the worship times for the rest of Holy Week for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. And for today and for Holy Week, we will not have spoken prayers in church. You will have the opportunity to write your prayers out in the Welcome Center, and we will pray those over the week. And so now we enter the story.
reading this morning is from the book of Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he'd entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Please stand as we sing. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near, and I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. 
And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Okay, we're going to sing this hymn that the disciples sang um, before um, the Passover. Then Jesus said to them, 
You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, it will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. And he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. And then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple pre-teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. A reflection from the disciple John. Today has been a blur. Jerusalem is crowded with people. Jesus told Andrew and Philip to find a man with a donkey and a colt, and they did as Jesus told. Everyone recognized him and shouted to him, and we could barely walk with all the people swarming around. As we entered the city, he told us to find a man who had a room ready for us to share the Passover. We found him just as he said. As we gathered around the table in this room, Jesus told us one of us would betray him. But who would betray him? We are his disciples. We have seen the miracles. He has called us and taught us. We will not desert him. 
At the meal, he said the bread was his body and the wine was his blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And now we're in the garden. Jesus asked Peter, James, and I to come close while he prayed. But how can I pray? We're exhausted. I smell fear in the air. Jesus is bothered, so agitated, he just threw himself to the ground and is whispering fervently to God. What is he saying? What is happening? I have never seen him like this. The last time Jesus, Peter, James, and I were together, it was on the mountain when a great light shone on him and Moses and Elijah were talking with Jesus. It was a miracle. We heard God speak. This is my beloved son whom I love. Listen to him. It was clear then that God was with us. It made sense, but now it is dark and I cannot make sense of what is going on. Why doesn't that same light, those same words come to us now? Jesus keeps saying the time is near, but what time? And how will God come to save him and us? He keeps saying, look for the kingdom of God, but I can't see it. I don't understand. My heart is weary. My body is exhausted. My eyes are heavy. My heart, my spirit, weary. I will close my eyes. I need to close my eyes. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, and as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, He deserves death. And they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. 
He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to build, buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, and the price of the one of whom a price had been sent, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. How is God speaking to you and the world through this story? We invite you to reflect on this question as we continue with the offering. The ushers will come forward and pass the offering plates. Uh, online donations are possible through Venmo, and kids, your donations in the basket go to feed hungry people in the world. Thank you. 
Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they'd wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man for today. I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor has said to them again, which of, you two, which of the two do you want me for, to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, And what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. And then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him, and they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot even save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. What is happening? What has happened? Who am I? I'm Simon. I, I come from Cyrene. I, I'm a Jew. Uh, my family was forced to exile to Jerusalem 300 years ago. My family was brought to Cyrene, a Greek town in northern Africa. There's 100,000 of us Jews there now. I am Simon a Jew from North Africa. So why am I here in Jerusalem? I come from Pass. I come from Passover. We Cyrenian Jews have our own synagogue here. We are no strangers to Jerusalem. But why was I here at the moment I was? I was pulled from the crowd by the Roman soldiers to carry the cross of Jesus of Nazareth to Golga, Golgotha because he was fainting from what they had done to him. The Romans, those butchers, they don't like anyone to mess with their murderous parade. They beat and whip and disgrace their condemned. They make them walk with their cross to Golgotha and then they nail them. 
They want to show power and brutality. But after you're beaten, how can you carry the cross beam of your cross? Some do, not, not all. You must weigh at least 80 pounds of wood. Not everyone can do that after being beaten. But the Romans don't like their condemned to stumble and even stop or ruin their parade. So it isn't uncommon to choose someone else to carry that beam. So the march continues. But I was chosen. Why, why, why me? Jesus of Nazareth. I, I've never heard him teach, but we Cyrenians, we, we, we know him. We hear from Jerusalem. We hear the news all the time. I was hoping to come here and, and hear him teach. There's always news coming from Jerusalem. Some Cyrenians have heard him. He heals, he preaches, but he's different. Not like other rabbis. He, he goes off into the hill and prays all night. He comes back and talks about God as if he knows him, as if he's experienced him. He doesn't just talk about ideas. He shares what God is like. Like he knows God. He eats with sinners and tax collectors. I mean, who does that? Who does that? He welcomes the poor. Who does that? And his life is like his teachings. Who is he? I helped him carry his cross to his death. I mean, I was made to. I, I didn't. I, I, I didn't ask to. I wasn't. For, I was forced to. Was it shameful? Was it sinful? Or a privilege? Who is this man? You know, from Leviticus, it says, you know, God says, be holy as I am holy. Jesus, he turned that on his head. He says, be compassionate as your Father in heaven is compassionate. He doesn't use our word holy, which is a good word, but he, he chooses another word, compassionate. He calls God compassionate and as if he knows God. The Greeks don't know this. The Romans don't know this, but the word, the Hebrew word from compassion, it comes from the word rock. It's rockum. It means from a woman's womb. The origin, it's the most powerful word that exists of love. What is more powerful? What is more powerful, love, than that from a mother who has carried and born a child? Jesus is using that on how he speaks of God. And then he's telling us that God has compassion for us, but as well as we are to have compassion to brothers and sisters and sinners and Gentiles. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who is this man? I helped him carry his cross to his death. This is way above me. This is way too powerful for me. I, I need time to understand this. For I think that something holy and compassionate has just happened. And it's happening. Make me a part of this, O oh God of Israel. I am a part. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. 
The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance, and they had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb.
You have given all to me. To you, God, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and grace. That is enough for me. Amen. Amen. Peace.